Hey everybody, welcome back to Silver Dragon Crafts. Once again, it's been a long time and I apologize, but we are finally to the finale, part 5 of the Let's Build 48 Plus Houses. Uh, you'll see here later in the video, it's, that's not even right, because I found out that there's two different types of roofs that we put on one of the buildings. So it's uh, 64, I think it turns out to be, instead of 48. But I do want to thank my brother for putting this little tree together to help us figure out if that there was 48 or 64. I believe 64 turned out to be the final count. But uh, I was kind of getting tired of doing that. I'm sure some of you are tired of doing that too, or listening to me talk about it. So let's get on to the build of the last two houses. Okay, as we know, we already built the structures out of the foam core, and now I'm adding wood grain texture to the actual wood, because the wood that you buy at the store is pretty smooth, so you take uh, some clay sculpting tools, gouge out some of the wood, make a nice wood grain, or use your X-Acto knife to soften the edges so they don't have perfect right angles. And I was getting ready to stain. I was getting ready to stain the uh, the wood, but then I remembered I had some leftover stuff, so I thought, well, I might as well use that. And that's what's in the box. It's always a good idea to use leftover stuff so your wife doesn't get mad that you're cluttering up the basement. All right, here's the two that we're going to do. One is uh, grout and paint, and the other is going to be plaster. So those are our last two stucco techniques. But first of all, we gotta cut the the bricks. Oh, we gotta texture them first. Yeah, this is like I say here. This is really loud and annoying. The the rocks do a great job to give texture to the bricks, but it is house shattering. It wakes everybody up. All right here I cut just, it's balsa wood so it's easy to cut. I cut just a little L out of it and that made it so it fits perfectly on the uh, corner of the building. Just be careful to not go through the wood or through the wood and into your finger. Most people don't like to have the blood on the, the doors and the walls of their houses. Here's what I was talking about where the bricks are too big. So we're going to try and cut them down to about half the size that they are. But using the X-Acto knife would take way too long, so hooray, off we go to the Proxon. This is a tool that saves you a lot of time. It's not 100% necessary, but it does save you a lot of time when you're trying to make a big building or small, even small buildings. The foam cutter is... In, a lifesaver basically. Okay, here's where I'm going to do the, I call it hand hewn or rough hewn. Just the, the bricks are just kind of scratched out of the foam. It takes a while, it's pretty messy. It looks pretty good on some of the buildings. I kind of screwed this one up when I go up the corners to make it look, I don't know actually what I was trying to make it look like. You'll see in a bit but I don't like the way it came out. The uh, the other parts of the building are nice, but yeah, when, I, when you see the corners, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, here we are back at the Proxon, cutting the rough hand-hewn bricks. And because the uh, tumbler is so loud, you can do the hand squish method, which works just as well. It takes off the the sharp corners turns them into rough edges and makes it look a little bit more realistic. And here I've already started putting the small bricks on the one building. Now I'm putting the rough hewn on the smaller building. And that's what I'm talking about, going up the side like it was a beam. It just looks goofy and I don't think anybody would actually build a building like that. It was just an idea I had 
when I was doing the building and it obviously backfired. Well, not backfired, but it just, it just doesn't look right. All right, now I'm working on the windows. Some more of the leftover wood. Got the window framed out. Still looking at that saying that looks really silly. But I was gonna take it apart, scratch those all off and just do like the other building, but they were already glued on there so I figured I might as well just finish with it. But you'll see at the end it looks a little funky. So here I'm cutting the inside boards for the windows. Gonna glue those in and that's just balsa wood again or that I had stained for a different project. And y'all know what this is. This is Jeremy at Black Magic Craft. His uh, Mod Podge water and black paint sealer and base coat for the bricks. I'm going to do that on this house here and then probably on this house. I'm doing the same thing to get into the nooks and crannies and kind of firm up the foam so it doesn't get destroyed with handling. Done with the Mod Podge stage. Now we're going to do some different colored bricks like we did on the, the first house. We need a couple of uh, different shades of gray, maybe some khaki, just so that the bricks don't look like they're all from the same mother ship. There's the base coat of gray, or dark gray. So here I've already done a couple of the bricks in different color. Now I'm doing a dry brush of plain old gray on the, I guess you could say chapel, just maybe due to the steeple type roof, but of the small house. All right, stucco technique number three. This is sanded grout and paint. And we don't want to put too much grout in there. You know, just enough to get the paint... Ah, oh, crud. Alright, well, let me dump some of this out here. Yeah, that was pretty funny. My wife saw me do that. She was laughing at me. So, uh, I dumped out some of the stuff that spilled out. Put a little water in. Mixed in the little bit more paint. And then I'm pretty much just going to slather it on the wall of the, like I said, church maybe. I like this technique because it's, well, it's not supposed to be messy. And it's not too messy. It's just a couple ingredients. So it's pretty cheap. A little paint. A little uh, sanded grout. Just paint it on. Make sure you clean your brush very well afterwards, otherwise it's toast. Now this one was plaster, and this one is probably the most realistic because of just the way it looks, and you can shape it any way you want. You can put designs in it, you can make it smooth, you can put like trowel marks in it, but I think this one ended up being my favorite. You see at the end there's a couple little spots where I should have smoothed it out a little bit more, but... I mean, this stuff, if you get it on the, the wood, you can scrape it off when it dries. You'll see that later. I use that tool to scrape it off and then brush it off with a dry paintbrush. But yeah, I, I think that one looked the best. Here I'm using a different uh, piece of foam to uh, apply it to the building. While I'm doing this, I want to say thank you to everybody that's subscribed. We're up to like 400 subscribers now which is way more than I thought I'd ever have. I'd like to thank you all for subscribing and keep on watching because after I'm done with this series, 
I've got a couple buildings that I've built. I've got a jousting tournament field that I built. I got a a maze, uh, not a maze. That one's coming in the future. Uh, a Medusa home. So there's some good uh, good ones coming. I'm gonna start after this is on uh, YouTube for a week or two, and hopefully get those out. I I won't say that I'm gonna get them out quickly because obviously I can't do that. But pretty soon the sun's not going to be out, the pool's going to be closed, and I won't be out there in my, we'll say Speedo. I won't be out there in my Speedo tanning my body. So hopefully the, the videos will come a little bit more quicker next, next time. Alright, this is Mod Podge and Khaki Paint. When you give it a good stir, always wear your nice white long sleeve t-shirt when you paint so that way when you spill on it or drop your sleeve in it you'll be able to tell stories of how much fun you had when you were crafting so I put some Mod Podge in there just to give it a little more strength because the plaster does chip if you've, I mean you've all worked with chip plaster before doing crafts in school or in your own house but my thinking was the Mod Podge will add a little bit of strength. Yeah, see here's the other one. Where if you can't quite see it, it's definitely cracking under the pressure. I don't think anybody's going to put that much pressure on your, your crafts if you're using them on the table. But it does, it does definitely crack if you put pressure on it. So now we're working on the, the roof and the trusses and the supports for the roof. Little quick, quick grab, Eileen's quick grab glue with the uh, top beam on so while the beams are drying I'm gonna work on more balsa wood already stained and these are gonna be uh, shutters and the door for the like we said like the church or the steeple These are just some cross beams that I'm putting on the door to give it a little more appeal, visual appeal. Plus, doors back in the day, I would imagine, had some kind of support, so it makes it look a little bit more authentic. I have more glue on the second house. for the outer visible beam. Pretty soon we'll get to the uh, the wood that's going to be used for the, uh, the roof itself. Alright, so what I'm doing there is making sure that the beams that are going to run from the top to the bottom are equally spaced so that when I do put the wood that's going to be used for the actual roofing material they're all glued in the proper spot not just floating in air and I cut the boards to the corresponding length see there you can see how they fit so you get your thin pieces of foam 
texture it with the wire brush. I use a piece of styrofoam to soften the edges so that they're not all perfectly rectangular. And then uh, I make sure that I cut enough for both sides of the roof. The attention that you put onto the small details and th that's what is going to set your stuff apart from other people that kind of race through it, which is fine. I mean, maybe they don't have time or whatever, but if you want your stuff to look really nice, do all the extra steps to make the, the build that much more authentic and more detailed. People will notice. All right. Here's what shot this. Even we thought we had 48, then we thought we had 64. And I forgot that I had used this corrugated paper and the, the pre-made shingles. So I was gonna try and figure it all out again. And I just said forget it. So now instead of let's build 48 plus houses, it's let's build 64 plus houses. And I don't even know what the final number would be, and I don't want to call my brother again because he's a busy man. All right, this is the pre-made shingles that I got at the trains, the Hobby Train Store, and uh, they look okay, but you gotta, you definitely gotta put a lot of paint into it. I don't think I'll use it again for my builds, but uh, for some people that like to use quick builds or to make quick builds, that, that would be a good product to use. And then the corrugated paper that was the orange stuff, I think I just got that at Michael's and thought that that might look like an okay roof as well. I think Jeremy did that one on one of his builds where he accidentally cracked it or something. I think he, so that's definitely not my idea. Um, here I'm putting blue paint on the, the wood for the roof and because at the time Everybody on YouTube was doing it with uh, blue roofs. I know Devs and Dice was doing it. And I saw a couple other people make blue roofs. But it came out too blue, so I used plain old gray as a dry brush. And that made it, that weathered it, and it made it look pretty, pretty decent. And definitely better than when it was the bright, bright blue. Uh, I don't know if I'll use blue again, but here you can see the difference with the dry brush and without the dry brush. So you d I definitely will finish this batch with a, a plain old gray dry brush before I put it on the uh, on the top of the building. All right, nutmeg brown. Let me tell you, it doesn't taste anything like nutmeg. That's a friggin' joke. But uh, I use this on the uh, the shingles to make it look like they're made out of wood. I spent a good couple of minutes trying to fix this sheet of shingles, so we'll see how it comes out. I started with the black base, went to the nutmeg brown, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to add another color or two. Then I was going to put the nutmeg brown on the uh, corrugated paper, but I think I ended up mixing a little of the nutmeg brown with a little of the gold, trying to come up with some kind of copper look. So you can, uh, you can be the judge to see if it looks like copper or if it looks like nutmeg brown mixed with gold. It doesn't look that bad, but I don't know where people in the medieval times would have found corrugated metal. Maybe it's a bunch of bamboo glued together. Then I use a little bit of lime green, very little bit it's for a patina to make it look like it's uh, 
tarnished. There's a good story about that at the student center at Northern Illinois University. Way back when they had a copper roof and they treated it incorrectly. So it was copper, bright, shining in the middle of campus, shining all over town. Then it rained a couple days and the copper turned brown and it had been brown ever since. So then they added some big fluorescent lights and they changed the name to Home Student Casino instead of Home Student Center. Ah, my alma mater, I love it. All right, back to the colored gels for the windows. And then back to the, uh, the blue boards on the roof. Try to stagger them so you don't get too many scenes. I should have taken my own advice because when I show the final shot of the roof, you can see it's basically a seam every other board. So I should have staggered them a couple more, but maybe I was in a hurry, like the people I was talking about earlier. I mean, it looks it looks okay, but obviously if I was making this for a full-scale diorama, I would rearrange the boards a little bit. There you can see the seams are all in the same spot, right down the boards. I should have put more boards in. Here I added the top board to keep the rain out of the building. I added these fascia boards to cover up the foam core. I put some on the one with the tin or the corrugated roof, and I put one on with the pre-made tin or pre-made shingles roof. And I think that's the two friends all finished up. Oh yeah, you gotta do the black wash. Definitely want to do some weathering. Otherwise the paint is too fresh and the building looks almost brand new, which we know they're not. So uh, black wash with water, black paint, a little bit of rinse aid from the dishwasher or from the sink. So it flows evenly or easily. But don't uh, brush so hard that the bubbles start coming up. Then it's a pain in the butt. little black wash on the tiny little, I guess we can call it an outhouse now. Do not do those crazy tall corners, that's what I'm saying. I definitely should have taken those apart, I still hate that I didn't. But, it's, it's done and now you know not to do it. This is the final set. Oh no. The final dry brush of very light, very faint dry brush of white to bring out the details. To accent the high high points on the buildings. It definitely looked better after I did this. Coming up on the end of these two buildings, they both got a little uh, light dry brush with the white. And then I'm going to have all, I believe I've got a couple shots of all the buildings next to each other. So we can see how some of the 64 plus buildings that you could build with the combination will look. Move to the final wrap up. Here's all our stuccos, all the different brick styles, different foundation styles. Here's one building. Here's another building. Needs a window on the face. Here's the building that I found in the back of the storage room and then the little tavern. So there you have it. 64 plus ways to build a house. Mix, match, and mingle the all, all the different parts and you can have quite a little village if you got time to build that many structures. 
And here's the buildings placed in a, in a, one of my first things that I ever built was a big diorama floor. So I want to say thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're, you're a trooper. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Tell all your friends and neighbors about the, uh, the, the page, Silver Dragon Crafts. And uh, keep your eyes open for my next video. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the, uh, the building that I did. I don't want to say what kind of building it is yet. Or if I'm going to do the jousting tournament. I got a couple that I can choose from. So uh, keep your eyes open. And keep watching. Thanks for the subscribers that are out there. Especially the first couple that have been with us since the beginning. And then visit Like a Math Class channel. All your math needs in one spot. Thanks for watching.